This is a CBC Podcast. Anine Jain, how are you? Gone along, which is I love you. Agamemok, keep going. Dain Tile, for don't touch. This is First Words, an Indigenous language podcast by Unreserve. Yat e, which is a greeting. Miigwech, which means thank you. Sezi Linda McDonald Guye, Denek e, Wudzi Amala Sa, Watson Lake Nestel, and Ditani e, Keisla. My name is Linda McDonald, and I'm from Watson Lake, and I'm a teacher in Watson Lake. I was born and raised on the family trap line uh, north of Watson Lake, north of the airport. And my grandfather, Frank Watson, who's the namesake of Watson Lake, um, met and and lived with my grandmother, Adela Stone. But in the early 60s, when I was about three, myself and my older sister and my father uh, we were diagnosed with tuberculosis, so we were sent to Charles Campbell Hospital in Edmonton. And uh, at the time, that was the closest hospital where they were treating tuberculosis. So therefore, at a very critical age, I was thrust into an environment that was so different from my home. You know, I didn't know English. I you know, as a child, you think you've done something wrong. And you're basically, it was very much a a jail type situation, because at the time, they thought tuberculosis should be treated with bed rest. So they'd get you up in the morning, and you'd have breakfast and then make you go back to bed. And that really was unhealthy. And of course, they didn't know that then. And uh, one thing staying at Charles Campbell for two years did to me was really eradicated my use of the Casca language. So I came home and, of course, I was kind of a smarty pants thinking, oh, I can can speak English really well. I I could, uh, I knew the alphabet. I knew my numbers. My dad worked at the airport in Watson Lake. He was a laborer there, and, and he also was a guide, a big hunting guide. And um, when the authorities were taking First Nations people to residential school, and of course you know that if your status, your status Indian under the Indian Act, you had to go to a residential school. So I think dad had gotten wind of this, and he went to the airport manager and asked the airport manager if his children, if his kids, could go to the airport school. We were very fortunate to not to have to go to, to the Lower Post Residential School, and I'm I'm forever grateful to my dad, to my father, for thinking of that and to standing up for us. So when I started grade one, I had a head start over my siblings, who you know struggled because we just spoke Casca at home. So that was the start of me turning my back to my own language. I still understood it because everybody spoke it at home. But I, the more I went to school, the more I lost the use of my language. Um, I recall, this is a, you know, a difficult thing to say, but I recall in being in the store with my parents and, and I asked my mom and dad not to speak to me in Casca. And I just remember I was quite young, like five or six, and my mom just looked very sad and and my dad got mad at me. But that was the way society was. Society led us to believe that we, our language wasn't important, it wasn't as good as English, and the whole world was speaking English, and we should just forget about it. So at a very young age, I picked that up. I'm still in this in the job at the at the Watson Lake Secondary School, teaching uh, Casca to high school students. But it is the most difficult job I've ever had, because it it is not an easy language, and um, and also because my skills were very very rusty. When you're uh, when you understand the language and don't speak it, some people call it si- silent speaker. To be a silent speaker. 
it's very difficult because the best person to be teaching any language is someone who is fluent. And I don't have that kind of proficiency in my language. Unfortunately, even after all these years, we're losing our fluent speakers, we're losing the really intricate, detailed uh, ways of describing s- some things and and the the phrases uh, we don't we don't have these really difficult phrases anymore. We're down to um, you know the basics, and it's because we've you know we've lost a lot of fluent speakers. But in my family's dialect, the Watson Lake Lower Liards or the Lower Post area, there's seven speakers. I don't consider myself to be one of the seven fluent speakers because I I still struggle to put together some sentences. And I think part of my problem, even though I've been working in it 20 years, and I think this is something that people don't realize, how badly one can be affected by the, the influences of society. You know, I grew up thinking that we shouldn't speak Casca because I'd gone to school, you know, I'd been in the hospital you know, I grew up thinking that English was the the better language. So, and and the same thing is said by those who went to residential school who were punished. They they can understand it completely, but to get a phrase out of their mouth, um, it's very difficult. And I recall uh, one elder from BC. Uh, he was saying that he still tastes the soap in his mouth from being punished for speaking his language. So when he tries to speak it, he still has that taste. Or other people who stay, say they still feel the sting on their hand from being strapped for speaking their language. So when you've been traumatized or in any way made to feel less than, I, it really does affect how your brain operates. So even though I've been at it for a long time, I have this self-image of myself that I can't do it or that I don't feel like my skills are good enough. I do this because I I believe that I don't want to be one of the last speakers and I I did not teach my son and that is really uh, one of my big regrets and it was because I I just did not have the confidence to teach him I just felt that I didn't know enough and I really believe that all of our languages really are very, very important to keep alive because it's who we are. And uh, Auntie Maida Donacy used to always say, if we're we're not speaking our language, then we're white people. And she said, we're not white people. And I was always taught that the animals and the land around you that you live on is you can only communicate to them in in Casca, or that is the best way, not to say that you can't be grateful in English, but I feel that so much of who we are is tied up in our language. And if we lose our languages, we really lose a, a big part of how we talk about ourselves and and our values. And it's just not the same in English. So I will forever be working on the Casca language to the day I die. I will be doing things to to teach people or, or to promote, uh, to assist anybody who wants to learn, because that's who we are. And in terms of colonization, when you think about residential schools taking, taking the language away and the fact that Casca still is spoken, it makes me feel so good that, you know, they didn't win. Uh, the language is still with us. And I think for younger people, the, the few younger people that I know who are learning in Watson Lake, it's, it's just made a huge difference to them. You can see it in how they carry themselves. They're so proud. And I really believe that for anything you're dealing with, whether it's healing on any level, I think if you're going to take on learning your language, I think it just connects it connects you to who your ancestors are. It connects us to to our past. Yeah. 
One interesting thing I like to teach my students is the word for yesterday and tomorrow is the exact same word. Tacho is both yesterday and tomorrow, tacho. And I think that is so cool because, you know, we've got all the New Age people and, well, maybe Buddhism as well, be, because, you know, how you have to be in the moment. And it's today, to do Zanes, this day that's important. We would never say anything that was harmful or hurtful to somebody or to something. And the term for that basically is tun tse. Tun tse means you're saying something that is really not proper. And the reason you, you we were cautioned about this growing up is everything that you wish upon somebody, even if you're in a fit of anger, it's going to come back to you. And we grew up with following a'i, and a'i is our word for law. And it also means our beliefs. It's both a verb and a noun. So you have to be careful of a'i and you have to behave with a'i. So if you're putting somebody down, that would be a'i. And then it's also tun set, which means you're going to bring it upon yourself. My name is Linda McDonald and I'm a Casca woman from Watson Lake and I teach Casca at the Watson Lake Secondary School. And the couple of words I have for you today are uh, the word for yesterday and tomorrow, tacho. So didu zenes is today, this day. And another word I have, which I really like, is tunse, and that means to not say something that is incorrect or harmful because you're going to bring it on yourself. And then, of course, another really, really important word, and which all people know, all Casca people, is a'i. And a'i means to be to follow our laws. It means the highest law. So those are my phrases. And finally, I would just like to say kola, which means enough. Sugasinla. Thank you. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.